Aside from Dude. silver scrapes, the greatest two words in competitive League of Legends, base race. The moment that two teams decide that the outcome of a game will come down to a 10 second sequence makes for an unmatched level of excitement on one end and soul crushing despair on the other. Here are the five best base races from pro play. Starting this list off with a bonus honorable mention that we just couldn't leave out before the dominant Cloud9 roster of 2013 summer took the LCS by storm, the team failed to qualify for the spring split with a very different looking roster. In their opener of the Season 3 qualifiers group stage, the heavily favored C9 came against Team Marn and Hai, then the jungler for the team decided to start up a base race against an Anivia, and by the time they realized they were too slow out of the gate, it was much, much too late. I do not believe it, they're oh gonna go for it. It's gonna be an epic base race. Cloud9 going in there, they're gonna get on towards the inhibitor turret. Meanwhile in the top, they're actually losing out. Cloud9 are gonna win out this one. The true shot barrage is gonna come across, but it's not gonna be enough to slow them down. Inhibitor goes down, the turret meanwhile has gone down. They've realized they're losing it, they've realized they're losing it, they're trying to get back. <laughs> It's not going to be enough. Thank you, D. They're losing the Nexus turrets now. You can see the Nexus turret is going to go down. That's one. Can they get a second? Here comes Echo. Echo back in time. They're going to defend it. They get the wall off in time. That's going to be the curse of the sad mommy. The turret hitting on them as well. So two members are defending it. They're still pushing. Meanwhile, Marna managed to take down the Nexus turret in the ma in the Cloud9 base. That's a kill. They're on towards the Nexus turret. Team Marn are going to take oh this. I do God. not believe the base race has happened. Fantastic performance. Cloud9 have just about got back in time, and it's 11 10. What? Team Mon beat Cloud9. That loss prevented C9 from qualifying for 2013 spring and proved to be a harsh lesson learned for the C9 captain en route to becoming one of the greatest shot callers in the history of NA. Ah, this match seems like it was only yesterday, probably because it happened this split. 100 Thieves racked up an 8,000 gold lead over FlyQuest, and instead of playing out a slow and calculated game while ahead, they decided to toss the game up to a coin flip. Uh, Is this the FlyQuest base race call into the enemy base? Uh, going to be taken uh, take go. it down. This could be it. Ryu onto the inhibitor himself. TP going to be used here. Somebody trying to have 100 up. Thieves trying to come in and help. Oh, no, he play goes down. It's going to be Nexus through another one. Drake. Drake down. FlyQuest still no, in the Drakes are going to be used. FlyQuest and Nexus. Thieves oh, and Nexus. God. It is point for point. Fly and FlyQuest win. Holy hell. What a base race. FlyQuest performed another heist the very next week when Santorin and Wild Turtle got revenge on their former TSM squad. Kennen actually gets really good attack speed as he levels up. Wild Turtle is going Not to get an inhibitor with him, and now FlyQuest tries to play the stop the back game. Not Zoe again! coming in from the side. Mindy, Bjergsen, and Sven caught the fight with Santorin. Keen now enters the backing from Greg. May make it Not a again, time. The They're going to do it! It's going down again, Zyrene. Five and four. They look to be seven and five in the summer split. FlyQuest on your Nexus. Slicing Maelstrom. They get it! TSM down, and Fly FlyQuest pushed through the base for the win! FlyQuest wasn't the only team to win a dramatic Nexus race in 2018 summer. The new kids on the LCK block, Griffin, faced off against the defending world champs from Gen G. And after trading countless explosive teamfight victories, the two teams were separated by less than a thousand gold at 53 minutes, and the ending was all you could hope for in a match that close. Okay, Ambition and Ruler. Ruler doing a lot of damage, and Ambition is gonna throw his face into Griffin. The knockup's gonna come down as he does get himself out. The fadeaway jump shot is, oh my god, Viper! He is gonna get taken down, but no! Tarzan's there with the Lamb's Respite! They do manage to get the Mercurial Scimitar out of Ruler. He knows that he's the last man standing. He's buying time. He's he buying time. Save it as Cube jumps back in into an open Genesis. And Griffin, they're just going to bomb rush the window. Everyone explodes and teleports into the Griffin base. Gen G, I think they've just done it. They have done it. They're going to win this game 2 0. Insane ending on this oh, one. Oh, Chovy. Chovy's got the flash. Can he do it? Can he actually get oh, over? Crap. He's got the dissonance. Everyone running back in. How many autos can he get? Oh, the three man shot wave. He doesn't kill Ruler, though. That is so important. The headbutt to get him out of the way. Two, one three. More. He dies. And Genji win the game.
You have never seen scenes like this in a competitive game. They were so close, one more Ono would have done it. We're not in playoffs, but it feels like playoffs, and Gen G dumbfounded find the victory. The CLG TSM rivalry may not be what it once was, but at MLG Anaheim in 2013 summer, when massive esports venues were still relatively new, the rivalry reached critical mass. CLG racked up a 13,000 gold lead behind Lynx Zed and Nian's Elise, but struggled to close out the game. Luckily for the faithful followers of Hotshot GG and Co, they had the minions on their side. To two. Oh, they get numbers. Oh, he gets knocked up to damage output. Chowster saving himself. Chowster tried to run away. The slow comes out for special. Hey, hey, Quadra kill for Wild Title. Nian, the only man alive. But minions are knocking on the door of TSM. Freak, TSM wants to backdoor this entire base with Nian up. But the minions would end the game on TSM's base. And here we go, Nian. Can you be a hero? The Nexus will die so fast. The last TSM's card has fallen. Nexus is naked. TS it's taking so much damage. Can Wild Turtle up damage a bunch of minion waves? Nian goes in. He finds Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle goes down. Double kill. Triple kill for Nian. And the minions will can try to end the game. Cyrus, can you do it? More damage. There are so many minions right now. <gasps> the minion waves respawn and buy a little bit of time. It's over. But it's not enough. Counter Logic Gaming in 60 minutes. The minions backdoor the base. In Season 8, running 3-4 to four teleports became the standard in the meta, but Counter Logic Gaming was 6 years ahead of the times. At the Season 2 World Championship group stage, it was SK Gaming that felt the wrath of CLG's triple teleport promote strategy. SK Gaming may have been in them to continue pushing through. We've got a 36 second cooldown on Big Fat LP. Double Lift is now backed off. No, he's still in there, still on that turret. He's trying to take the base continue. tower. He's trying to take the Nexus turret. Now and then, misses the taunts on him. He does manage to get one Nexus turret. Meanwhile, SK Gaming has taken the Nexus turret off the road. This has effectively become a base race. Boy Boy getting in there. Oriana's just about to spawn. They're going to continue on the pressure. The Nexus turret did not go down. And SK Gaming forced to back away from this one. So CLG picking up a base turret on that one. Now we're seeing Boy Boy teleporting. They're going into the base. CLG are pushing oh, into the base. Boy Boy's gone for the final next turret. They're going to try and catch up towards Aranea. Have they got the damage? Everyone Boy Boy's back in. in. The second teleport from this big battle. See Oriana Ultimate. The Nexus is exposed. The double is just going to take the Nexus down. No, Kevin gets in there. Absolutely obliterates him. The Boy Boy drives him back. He got it. won it. I do not believe. That win was the only victory between the two teams in six group stage matches, so maybe the strategy was a bit too ahead of the times. Poor SK and poor Ocelot. SK versus Fnatic at IEM Katowice with first place in the group on the line. After crawling back into the game, Fnatic loses Soaz and N-Rated and SK looks set to end the game. But again, it's a teleport that is the undoing of Ocelot's team. The super minions, a massive wave of them going towards the Nexus turret right now. Fnatic have to get back and deal with them. Meanwhile, you can see that SK Gaming are just keeping them delayed. They've got two in inhibitors down, and they are just going to pile straight up towards those super minions in the base. You can see there's coming in there. Peke is definitely up towards the Nexus. Kevin is going to be able to go towards God. him. He's trying to do it. But meanwhile, they're in the base. Yellow Star's trying to defend them in the base. Peke is trying to take the Nexus down. Is anyone going to get out to deal with this one? Catches him with another axe. He's very low. No! With the rest of SK slapping Fnatic's Nexus turrets, if Xpeke doesn't make that play and execute it perfectly, Fnatic are the ones watching their Nexus explode, and that crushing force of pressure is exactly what personifies the beauty of the base race.